All right, so these just came in. These are the new Polar Pro filters for the DJI Mavic 2. This is actually the Vivid Collection, which comes in a three pack, an ND, which is a neutral density plus polarizer. They come in an NDPL8, come in a 16, as well as an NDPL32. And if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Aldrin Astacio. I do a lot of drone tech tips, tutorials, and product reviews right here on this channel. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing and also hitting that bell to be notified when I post the new videos. Now I was actually pretty excited to get these because of the fact that Polar Pro did not release any filters for the DJI Mavic Mini. So I was kind of questioning if they're gonna come out with something for the Mavic Air 2. And thankfully they did. They have a couple sets out there. They actually have a variable ND filter set as well as these right here which is the ND plus Polarizer Vivid Collection set. And the one thing I like about Polar Pro in general is that whenever they come out with new products on the market, you could tell it is kind of completely reimagined or redesigned by Polar Pro. It's not a standard out of the box type of filter set you're gonna get. You could tell that there's definitely a lot of attention to detail on how their craftsmanship is and how they make a lot of their lens filters. Now the Vivid Collection comes in a neutral density plus polarizer in a single lens. It comes in an NDPL8, 16, and 32. And attaching the filter is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is remove the outer ring that comes onto your camera. Pick the filter that you're gonna want to use. Here I'll put on an ND8. All you have to do is put it on there at an angle and twist it back on. Now as far as weight goes, this frame right here is a lightweight aerospace aluminum. I didn't have any issues powering it on. Once you power it on, there's there's no uh, issues on gimbal overload or any issues with the calibration. So powered on normally, everything works fine. Now I have a lot of videos on neutral density filters as well as polarized filters in general as far as how to properly use them, how to properly expose and the types of shots you can get. I'll make sure that playlist is above as well as down below. So if you want a lot more detailed information about all the ways you can use ND filters and what they're for, all the information will definitely be on that playlist. So make sure you guys check that out. Now to get some ideal motion blur in your video, you're gonna want to adjust your shutter speed to be two times your frame rate. So if you're shooting on something like the Mavic Air which shoots 4K at 60, 60 frames a second or 4K at 60, you're gonna now want your shutter speed to be 1 20th of a second. So if you're shooting at 60 frames a second, two times 60 is gonna be 120. So you're gonna to wanna to dial your shutter speed down to 120 and this helps you achieve some natural motion blur in your video. So now you're able to use the ND to bring your shutter speed down and then you can also use a PL which now is a polarizer which helps cut out a lot of glare or reflections as well as it also helps you get a little bit more color saturation in your video. Now a lot of times people will ask why would I ever want a regular ND? Why wouldn't I always want an ND plus PL type of lens? Because ideally with regular ND, not polarized filters, but regular neutral density filters, which means you shouldn't see much or any of a color variation when you're using an ND filter and you're, when you're not using an ND filter. Ideally, they should look the same. But sometimes when you add in a polarized lens like this, it could add a little bit of color cast to your footage. So that's the reason why most companies will come out with both. They'll come out with a standard ND set as well as an ND plus polarized set and some even come out with a just polarized set. So I took these for a quick flight outside just to see exactly how much difference or if there's a difference in color casting between a no filter flight versus one using this one, which is an NDPL. Now to determine which ND strength I'm gonna use, I will always normally point my drone in a direction that I'm plan on flying in. Once I do that, I will then go into my manual settings on the remote control and switch it from auto to manual. Now for this flight, I know I'm gonna be shooting at 4K at 60 frames a second. So that's the big thing there. I wanna know I'm shooting at 60 frames a second, which means I want my shutter speed to be 1 20th of a second or two times my frame rate. So with my drone pointed in that specific area, I'll switch my ISO to 100. I want the highest quality image. I then switch my shutter speed to 1 20th of a second. And of course, this is a fixed 2.8 aperture, so I'm not able to adjust that anyway. So today's flight, it was pretty sunny, maybe a little bit of haze out there. So knowing I'm gonna be shooting at 1 20th of a second, I will then switch that over to manual, switch it to 120. And as you can see here, it is very overexposed. Now being at 120, of course, it's letting in a lot of light and at 120 is overexposing my image. So what I'll do is I'll go through my filter set and I'll put on the first one, which is an ND8. I'll put that one on, see how well it looks. Look at my histogram to see if it's right in the middle. You don't wanna see anything spiking on the dark side or the left side or spiking on the right side or the overexposed side. You're gonna want that histogram to stay right kind of in that middle area. So I put on an ND8 first to see how that looked like. And just for reference, 
with an ND8 looks pretty good, but I also wanted to see what it might look like with an ND16. Uh, maybe the ND16 might work, so I put the ND16 on there as well. And then also, just for reference, put on the ND32, and I already know that's gonna be too dark for you know what I'm gonna be shooting for today, but I just wanted to show you guys how big of a difference it is putting on darker strength ND filters on there. So for me today, an ND8 worked really well as far as getting the proper exposure of how I'd like it, depending on which direction I was gonna be flying in. So I went with an ND8. So here's some side-by-side -side footage using no filter and my shutter speed's at 1 800th of a second, as well as my second flight, which is using the ND8. With the ND8, I was able to dial my shutter speed in to 1 20th of a second, which is the proper exposure I'm gonna want if I wanna have two times my frame rate. Now the one thing that is tricky about using PL filters or polarized filters in general is that even though they have that little etching right here of where that polarization currently sits on the lens and what you wanna do is be able to adjust it. So depending on which direction you're pointing your drone into, you want to point it in that direction, look on your screen, and then adjust the filter right here so that you're able to get the polarization that you're gonna want. Now, depending on how much or how less of saturation you want, say in something like the sky, you can make those adjustments here just by pointing it up, turning this right here on the front of this lens, and you're able to now adjust that polarization based off of this ring right here. Now, the other thing I would change when it comes to these filters, not even just the polar pair ones, but outside of the ones from Freewheel right here, they also have a neutral density plus PL filter. You almost always end up touching the lens because that ring is so small. Now, same thing is on the Freewheel one. If you have to make an adjustment on there, it kind of makes it a little tricky to do without accidentally touching the lens. But what I'd like to see on some future lenses if possible is to just add a little nub that comes out right at the edge of it. And that way you don't touch the lens while you're making these adjustments. And of course the links to these filters are gonna be down below in the video description. Also, like I said earlier, if you guys want more information about filters in general for not only the Mavic Air 2, but all the other drones, the Mavic Mini, the Mavic 2 Pro, and the Phantoms, make sure you check out the playlist above as well as down below in the video description. Thanks again to Polar Pro for sending me these filters to test out on my Mavic Air 2. And as always, if you guys got value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Ultra Sasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.